Hello and welcome to the RTV News Tonight. I'm Eugene Uiman, live from Chigali, coming up on RTV News Tonight. President Paul Kagame has noted that Rwanda and Africa have great potential in their sports sector, but that potential should be supported. And participants at the inaugural Forbes Women Africa Regional Forum here in Chigali have decided to join efforts in order to empower other women and promote development in their countries. The United Nations is increasing its call for help for on the, as the country Zimbabwe is experiencing its worst ever hunger crisis. President Paul Kagame has noted that Rwanda and Africa have great potential in their sports sector, but that the potential should be supported. The Rwandan head of state made the comments as he and the first lady attended the official inauguration of the Chigari Arena. Serge Inhore has more details on the story. President Paul Kagame said that the private sector and entrepreneurs should take a lead to promote cooperation in African countries, he said this today, Friday, while officiating Golden Business Forum to discuss how the private sector can increase its contribution to the social economic development of the continent. Participants at the inaugural Forbes Women Africa Regional Forum here in Chigali have decided to join efforts in order to empower other women and promote development in their countries. Sergeant Holly has more details. As in Rwanda, there are some who don't accept that there is gold mining. Gold miners in northern province claim that they don't have standardized material to use in this career. Northern province Governor Gatabazi Jambe Viani says those who don't know that there is gold in Rwanda are pretending to be ignorant. Alidango is the refinery which has the capacity to process gold from around the continent, boasting efforts to ensure that Africa adds value to its minerals before exporting them. Francis Gatale, the chief executive of Rwanda Mines, Petroleum and Gas Board, pledged that the government is going to invest heavily in the mining industry. Gold attracts security threats to the life of dealers and company officials believe in the country. The firm can help minim minimize those threats since they, don't, they won't necessarily need to travel long distances looking for a place that can refine gold. According to the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Rwanda exported some $500 million worth of minerals. Mining and acquiring recorded 18.2% growth in the same year. Rwanda taxed to collect $1.5 billion US dollars from mineral exports by 2024. Welcome back. This is RTV News. I'm Ejen Uiman, live from Chigali. Different soldiers have completed the trainings that were being heard in Rwanda Peace Academy in Musan's district. It was organized in partnership with Sweden. Serge Inhore has more details. On the national scene, the United Nations is increasing its call for help for as, the, as Zimbabwe is experiencing its worst ever hunger crisis. Millions on the brink of starvation and President Emerson Nangagwa has declared the country's drought national disaster, courtesy of Al Jazeera. In India, Narendra Modi tells India that a new era has begun after Kashmir power grab. India Prime Minister Narendra Modi has made his first public comment since the government risky this week. This week, and it's clear he regrets nothing, even though the move could potentially spark a war with Pakistan for analysis. Clarence Fedonese joins me live from Mumbai. The, what does what the Kashmir's independence mean in your view? There is no such thing as independence for Kashmir. Since independence in 1947, the state of Jammu and Kashmir has been and, God willing, will always be an integral part of India. There was an Article 370 of the Indian Constitution which gave 
the state of Jammu and Kashmir a special status in terms of a separate constitution, a state flag, and an autonomous internal administration. Unfortunately, this special status provided to the state of Jammu and Kashmir under Article 370 of the Indian Constitution led to severe problems and a lot of unrest in the state. It caused opportunities for terrorism and infiltration from neighboring enemies. Uh, Mr. Fernandez, tell me why India and Pakistan fight for it. Kashmir is popularly known as the Switzerland of the East. There is tremendous potential from the tourist, tourism perspective as far as Kashmir is concerned. And just to make a small comparison, as the volcanoes are of importance, tremendous importance to Rwanda, Kashmir is also of immense importance to India. Being the border state, Pakistan unfortunately keeps staking claim to this beautiful land of Kashmir. As I mentioned earlier, Kashmir has been since 1947 and will always be, God willing, an integral part of India. Fernandez Kalans, I thank you so much for talking to Guana Television. Thank you. More than 800 people have died this year trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea and death toll is still on the rise. In the last two months alone, dozens of bodies have washed up for tourist beaches bordering Libya, the main base for people smugglers, courtesy of Al Jazeera. And pleasure. But the death toll is rising all the time. And that's the reality that's haunting this beach. David Chater, Al Jazeera, Zazis. That's too sad. And this wraps up the day's edition. Let me remind you our top stories. President Paul Kagame has noted that Rwanda and Africa have great potential in their sports sector, but that the potential should be supported. Participants of the inaugural Forbes Women Africa Regional Forum here in Chigali have decided to join effort in order to empower other women and promote development in their countries. The United Nations is increasing the call for, Z to, for help for Zimbabwe as the country is experiencing its worst ever hunger crisis. I thank you so much for being with us. I am Ejen Uimana, live from Chigali, wishing you a very good night. Thank you so much.